Hello there! In this tutorial, we are crushing the Republic with Count Dooku, Dark Lord of the Sith. Welcome to Zorba Zorp Gaming, my name's Lachlan Linton Keen, and in today's painting tutorial for Star Wars Legion, we're diving into Count Dooku, leader of the Separatist forces. He's an interesting little model that presents some nice choices for us for creating a color palette, as well as showcasing a few techniques like wet blending. Let's dive in. So there's not too many parts to assemble with our Count Dooku, it just comes in a cape, a main torso and legs section, a couple of hands and his head. We're going to be assembling this model with normal super glue, not plastic glue, because it is that older style of Fantasy Flight plastic. So I'm going to glue the hands onto the cape piece, but I'm actually not going to glue the head in place, and I'm not going to glue the main cape assembly to our torso, because I'm going to be painting this model in a couple of sub-assemblies. There's a lot of detail in behind his cloak and in around the back of of the model that will be very difficult to get a paintbrush up underneath if we try and glue this all together and paint it together and it's always easier to paint the head if we've got that separate and not worrying about the rest of the model. So what I'm going to do is take my pin vise and drill a hole through the tab in the top of the cape section that would slot into the torso. Now what you could normally do here is just grab a piece of brass rod and glue that in uh, and then use that as your painting handle, stick it into a bit of cork but I'm only doing one model here so I'm just going to be really lazy and leave that model attached to my pin vise. So I've slotted Dooku's head in and given both of those sub assemblies a prime. You can see that I've got a rubber glove slipped over my pin vise to protect it from any paint. I've used the Tamiya Flat Grey Surface Primer which gives a really nice smooth coat and is the perfect starting point for our colour scheme. Now the first task with our painting scheme is to break down our model into colour regions. I've isolated 10 different areas and developed a colour scheme for each of those. They are the black boots and cloth, the brown trousers, the brown belt, all of Dooku's silver detailing. The cape has two sections, the outer cloth and the inner lining. We have the saber blade, the skin tone, the hair and beard, which is the same, and then just our basing colors. So as always, we're going to start with our contrast paint layers from Citadel because they need the integrity of the prime to be perfect underneath so that their contrast magic can be flawless. You'll notice that I am using a grey primer today, whereas I normally use Wraithbone under my contrast, but I want the contrast paints in this scheme to have a little less vibrancy and be a little bit more muted, so we've gone with the grey today. We're going to start with the Black Templar contrast and apply that all over Count Dooku's torso. He's got his kind of uniform, his cloth there. We're going to keep it off the belt, and then we're also going to apply that all over Dooku's boots. Now, uh, this is a, a really nice contrast paint. I really love the Black Templar because it's quite forgiving, but you do want to check all your normal contrast procedures, make sure there's no overpooling, and make sure that you haven't got any really thick areas of pigment. There's also his forearms, uh, which have a little bit of that black fabric as well on his sleeves, uh, which is on the other sub-assembly, so make sure you pick out those two, but be careful not to get any contrast paint on his cloak. Our second contrast layer is Flesh Terrors Red from Citadel Color. This is going to be lovely and deep and muted and a perfect base when it's applied over the grey for all of our red fabric on Dooku's cloak. Now I'm just going to be applying this to the outer layer of Dooku's cloak, although it doesn't matter if you spill it over the wrong region because this is the last contrast paint to go down. So I'm going to apply that nice and evenly all over the exterior of the cloak. When you're working with these broader flat surfaces, there's still a little bit of ridge detail here with the different cloak folds but it's a lot more flatter than something like fur or something like that, which contrast really excels in. So you need to make sure that your coat is nice and even to get a really lovely contrast separation and just, as always, watch for overpooling. Make sure you give that red contrast ample time to dry. I'm going to jump back over to our other sub-assembly and start working on Dooku's trousers. Now, I've decided to make these a brown in a lot of different reference photos of Dooku. You can see that a lot of his cloth is just black, but having that second kind of color element helps to make the black sort of pop, and it just gives a little bit more contrast and, and makes the different regions of his uniform really read to the eye. So brown for the trousers and brown for the belt. I'm going to be using a charred brown from Vallejo, and because we're going over over a grey prime. This can be quite bright in one layer, so I like to do a couple of thin coats uh, over the top, just stretching it out on your wet palette. You don't have to add any medium. It's quite a thin paint naturally. It's a really great Vallejo paint, so get a nice thin coverage all over those trouser legs. Once you're happy with the opacity of the brown, you've got it to the right level, what we're going to do is apply one more thin coat all over the brown just to make that layer wet, and then we're going to come in with dark flesh tone and do some wet blended highlights. 
So I put a bit of that on my palette, really pulled that out so it's nice and thin, and I'm gonna come in and just carefully apply that over all of the raised areas of the trousers. All of those folds of fabric that poke up above the rest and just kind of give those a natural highlight. And because we're wet blending into a wet uh, charred brown layer, that dark flesh tone will really nicely blend with the brown and create a lovely natural accent that just makes it look like the light is hitting those areas of the fabric and the shadow is staying in the recesses where we've got that charred brown already there. I love wet blending. We're going to see it again in just a second. It's really easy. There's a lot of fear around wet blending, but it's definitely a very, very simple technique once you get your head around it and uh, you can create a really lovely effect on the trousers. Now I've also used that exact same technique on the belt and now we're going to come in and just add a little extra layer of colour to the belt just to make it pop a little bit more and we're going to do that by adding tan from Vallejo. This is a really nice colour to add as a top highlight to any leather. So I'm going to put that on my wet palette, thin it out and then just do a very delicate technique where I just come in and just do some really small lines across the surface, hitting the edges, hitting some of the flat panel and it will all blend together and just look like a nice little bit of highlight light on that leather belt. We've nearly got this sub-assembly done, so we might as well jump onto the silver buckles while we're here. I'm just going to grab some lead belcher from Citadel, thin that out on your palette because it's quite a thick, gluggy paint, and, uh, and just apply that nice and thinly over those belt buckles. Make sure you don't just do the flat surface. They've got tops and sides that go right down uh, onto the belt and, and onto the uniform, and you want to make sure you get a nice even coverage all the way around those metal buckles. And then once that lead belcher is dry, just come back in with a bit of null oil and apply that neat straight onto the buckles to really help accentuate the lovely ridges and groovings uh, and the various detail on those silver buckles. So with that null oil down, the first sub-assembly is finished. We've got a really lovely little colour palette happening on this part of the model. The blacks and browns are quite complementary, and there's that little silver pop to draw the eyes. The next layer that we're going to be working on is the inside of the cape lining. And this is a really important layer, although it may not seem so at first. Before we dive into painting it, we're going to have a little chat about some colour theory and some approaches to painting. So Dooku's actual costume doesn't have a lot of contrast. It's quite monochromatic. He's wearing primarily black fatigues, and then he's got his big red cloak. There's a little bit of silver detailing, and the cloak lining is a little bit brighter, but there's just not enough going on to really draw your eye to the different regions on the model when you're painting a miniature. So what I'm going to do is elevate that contrast by painting the lining of his cloak a lot brighter. I'm still going to keep it in the same colour scheme. I'm going to bring it up, keep it in that reds, make it a kind of lighter yellow yellowy sandy brown uh, rather than that kind of sort of slightly lighter red tone. Now the double benefit of this is it not only adds contrast and stays tied into the palette but it also frames the model. Now framing is a technique where when we have a dark region on the model like Dooku's torso and leading up into Dooku's face but we want the viewer to look there the eye is naturally drawn to brighter colours. So instead of painting those regions bright we paint regions around them bright to create a frame of bright colour that draws the eye into the key region. The regions that we of course want to show are the lightsaber up the arm and into Dooku's face. So by painting that lovely cloak on the inside, a nice bright colour, it frames those regions and naturally draws your eye from Dooku's saber up the edge of the cloak and into Dooku's face, which is exactly where we want our viewer to be looking. So we're going to start off by putting down some earthy tones and then work those up and get them in the nice tonal area that we're happy with. I'm going to start with Earth from Vallejo Game Color and I'm going to to apply that nice and evenly all over the cloak. Now we need to make sure that we get all of the various edges, these cloak colours as well, because I want the edge to be the colour of the lining. So earth all over the flat areas, including the element of the cloak that is folded over his shoulder. And we also want to get that edge all the way up to the red fabric and then on the other side as well, coming down over his left hand. Make sure that edge has got that lining as well. By choosing to make these edges of the cloak the colour of the lining rather than the dark red red colour, it creates a nice bright frame around the entire model. It's frames within frames here guys, it's frameception. So we've got a, a fantastic kind of bold, stark element that really makes the whole model pop. It'll all totally come together once we've put the final colours down on the cape lining. Now if you're interested in learning more about framing and the kind of the colour theory behind choosing your colour palette, feel free to check out my mate Sloan's video from Sloan Ranger Studio. He's done a fantastic video on breaking down his kind of design choices behind creating color palettes for various armies. It's absolutely awesome viewing. Definitely check that out. 
So while that layer of earth is still wet, we're going to grab some plague brown, mix up a little highlight element, and wet blend some highlights onto that cloth. As we looked at with the trousers, wet blending is an awesome technique for natural materials like cloth, where we want really subtle blends. I'm going to grab some of that plague brown, and I'm going to mix about a 50-50 blend between the plague brown and the earth, and I'm going to come in with my brush and apply that over all of the raised areas of the fabric. We've got lots of kind of big billowing cape folds. Are we just want to pick out those areas in particular all over the inside and the over the flap that kind of section that's folding over his shoulder and make sure anywhere that's raised has got this 50 50 mix then once that's all done again still while all these layers are wet I'm gonna come in with some straight plague brown and I'm just going to apply this very targetedly in any regions that are exposed to sunlight so in particular that's the very top of the shoulders and flowing down to about halfway down his back on that section of cloth that's folded over his right shoulder because what we're going to create is this lovely look that the beaming sun of Geonosis is coming straight down on top of Dooku's head and his shoulders are going to be a little bit brighter than the base and in particular the underside of the cloak. You don't want to do any of this second highlight on the underside other than that region that is slightly exposed as the cape fans out behind him. So as we put down all these layers on the inside of that cloak lining, we can fully appreciate just how important the sub-assembly painting is. If we were trying to paint this cloak, you know, sort of past and around his legs and, you know, we'd be getting paint all over the torso, it would just be an absolute nightmare. So it certainly is a huge time saver. Now it's time to start working on the red elements of the cloth. And I absolutely love wet blending red. Red is a kind of color that terrifies a lot of people, but I absolutely love it. You can make it look really fantastic. We've got a lovely base there with our contrast layer that is now fully dry and I'm going to bring in some Vallejo. Uh, we're going to use the gory red and bloody red. Starting off with the gory red, I'm going to put that down on my palette. Again, we want nice thin paints for all of these layers because translucency is really key to get the lovely uh, kind of graduated blends of color. And I'm going to grab that gory red. I'm going to put it all over every raised fold. Just like we did with the plague brown on the inside lining, I want to hit every raised region and get quite a reasonably sized highlight, hitting all of those ridges of folded fabric so that we're just leaving the contrast paint in the recesses. We want to go all the way up over the shoulders, across the back, flowing all the way down, and in particular around the little plates that Count Dooku is wearing. Sort of, it's like a, a kind of augmented folded leather padded section that's at the top of his shoulders that's red as well and just turns into the red cape, we're going to get a nice coverage of gory red all over that region because we're going to re-kind of establish that recess detail later on with a wash. Now once that's all down, I'm going to grab some of the bloody red and I'm going to do the exact same thing we did with the pure plague brown highlight on the lining. I'm going to come in with the bloody red and just highlight and wet blend into those highlights across the top of his shoulders and down across the mid region of the cloak. The sun is blaring right down so his uh, shoulders are going to be brighter than the very base of that red fabric. So once you've got a lovely blend there, you want to use your fine detail brush and just gently blend a little bit of that bloody red into the wet gory red layers, just kind of taking your brush down the model, letting the paint flow in and creating a lovely graduation of slightly brighter tones across Dooku's shoulders. So all of those cloth layers on the cape are going to take quite a while to dry and if they do still have a bit of a sheen or a bit of a gloss when they're dry, don't be alarmed, we'll knock all of that back with the matte varnish in the final stage. But while they're dry, we're going to jump into our silver details. There are two silver regions on this part of the model. We've got Dooku's lightsaber, of course, the hilt, uh, and then we've got a little chain link which joins the cape and fastens it about Dooku's neck. So I'm going to grab my fine detail brush and pick out all of those regions with a nice even coat of lead belcher. As always, take this off your wet palette so it thins it a little bit and allows you to not get all kind of gluggy because lead belcher can glug up quite a lot. When you're painting Dooku's saber hilt, remember there is a little bit of metal that protrudes out over the blade, which of course is part of the elegant design of his curved hilt. Make sure that gets some silver as well. Just like the belt buckles, when that lead belcher is all dry, we're going to come in with some null oil just to shade and give a little bit of recessed detail to all of those metal areas. This is particularly useful on the saber and the chain links because of course the links need to be separated and all the various panels and details on that saber really pop once they've got some shade on them. 
So with Dooku's Saber Hilt well on the way, it's time to work on the blade. We're gonna put down a layer of white first so that we've got a lovely, bright, vibrant prime to work from. So I'm just gonna grab some Citadel Layer White Scar and apply that nice and evenly all over the Saber Blade. Now this is quite a thin paint, but it is going over the gray prime, so you shouldn't find it too hard to get a nice even coverage. So now our cloak layers have fully dried and it's time to start putting down some of our shades. The first one that we're gonna be using is Seraphim Sepia. Now, as always, when you're using Games Workshop shades, give them a really good shake so that they're nice and blended. And we're gonna be applying this Seraphim Sepia all over the cloak lining. This is a really nice brown. It tones that yellow and that kind of light sandy brown that we've got and just really brings it in just a little bit more with the color palette, sort of mutes it just a little bit, uh, but it also, kind of really helps enrich the recessed detail of all of the fabric folds, which really helps the fabric look nice and blended and helps the color graduation look really smooth on all of the fabric highlights. Our next shade is going to be some Nuln Oil. We're just going to apply this gently to the little collared region of red fabric around the top of the cape, uh, which just kind of accentuates Dooku's neck. It's probably a little region of padded stitching, and we just want to uh, put kind of a nice even coat of Nuln Oil all over that region, but make sure you don't spill any Nuln Oil onto the normal kind of folds of the fabric, because we don't want any weird staining from the Nuln Oil, but this will help really accentuate the recessed detail of that stitching pattern around Dooku's collar. Now once again we're waiting for some shade layers to dry so we're going to use our time efficiently and start doing the skin tone on uh, Dooku's hands just putting down the first layer and I'm going to be using some Kislev flesh. As always chuck the Kislev down on our wet palette and draw it out. You can thin it a little bit with Lamy and Medium if you need to but uh, I find my Kislev is pretty great straight down over the light grey prime as long as you thin it off the palette. So moving now back to the cape lining, once the Seraphim sepia wash has fully dried, we're going to create some targeted regions of shadow using Nuln Oil. Because of course this cape is going, you know, over Dooku's shoulders and the region behind his body should be a lot darker than the region at the bottom and particularly folded over his shoulder which would be exposed to a lot more sunlight. I just want to create some darker graduations and darker shadows up in that region behind his back and shoulders. So I'm going to come in with some Nuln Oil of course and just do some targeted a deposition of Nuln Oil into the recessed areas, uh, kind of blending it down from the bottom of the cape up to the top behind the shoulders so it's thicker in concentration where there would be more shadow. So that is now all of our cloth layers completed, which means, of course, we can reunite our two sub-assemblies, Dooku Upper and Dooku Lower. We can join those back together to finish off the models. The next layer that we are going to do is start working on Dooku's Saber Blade. Now, once again, we're not going to do anything crazy complicated with the Saber Blade. I've got a nice white, bright layer to work from, so I'm just going to create some glazes and just use some translucent paint to kind of hint at the idea of that fizzing and sizzling Saber energy. So I'm going to grab my blade bloody red, uh, the brightest red you own basically from Vallejo and I'm going to dilute that with some Lamian medium. I'm going to bring that all on the wet palette about 50-50 medium uh, to bloody red and I'm just going to apply that nice and heavily all over the saber blade. This is effectively a glaze. Every now and then I'll just come and do another layer on that saber until I've got three or four or five glazes so you'll end up with a nice rich vibrant red but just has a little kind of swirl of colour going on underneath that is isn't completely uniform. So with the Saber Blade coming along, it's time to finish off the hilt and the silver metallic detail. I'm going to grab some Stormhost Silver from Citadel Color, and I'm just going to start to do a few little edge highlights over our silver detailing. Using my fine detail brush, I'm going to come in with a little bit of silver on my brush and just pick out the very edges, accentuate the curvature of the Saber Hilt, the little protrusion that slides down the blade, and then also just give the uh, silver links of Dooku's chain across his cape just a little bit of a lift, picking out the individual individual chain links with that fine detail brush and that just elevates those silver kind of uh, layers to another level makes them a little brighter they draw the eye a little bit more you'll notice that I haven't done this to the belt buckle because I don't want that to be a huge focal point for the model it's all about the lightsaber the cape and Dooku's face and neck so uh, nice and bright on the saber hilt and the chain links so while I did those metallics the first glaze on the blade has dried so I've thrown down another one and we can see that Dooku is looking pretty fantastic and if if you're trying to make yourself a Count Dooku from this particular scene, do it.
your model's basically done. But of course, I would like my Dooku to have his head, so it is time to jump onto the wonderful face of Count Dooku himself. As you can see, I've just inserted my pin vise straight up into Dooku's neck, so I've got something to hold while painting such a small and delicate element, and I'm going to put down my skin tone once again using Kislev Flesh. Now, we want this layer to be very thin and very even, so just take some time, thin the Kislev Flesh out on your wet palette, and just move it around his face. You don't want it overly applied in the recesses like his eyes or anywhere in those kind of folds of skin, because we want a lovely thin and even coat of Kislev or all over Dooku's face. Also remember to grab his ears, but try and keep the Kislev flesh off his sideburns, his beard, his moustache, because we're going to use the prime as our base colour for those regions. So focus on getting all of the skin nice and evenly coated. Once the Kislev flesh is completely dry, I'm going to bring in Reichlin Flesh Shade to do our skin tone shading. Now Reichlin's really great because it shades the skin beautifully, gives it a little bit of warmth because of course we all have blood vessels underneath our skin. It does darken it a bit, but once we highlight it back up, it's going to look really great for some Caucasian skin tone. I'm going to apply that all over Dooku's face and his hands, making sure to get some nice definition in the recesses of his fingers, the joints between his fingers, his kind of different muscles going back down his hands, and also on his face, we want it sort of sitting in the crease of his brow. We're applying it uniformly, but just moving the pigment around so that it's pooling just a little bit in the right areas to accentuate those recessed details. Up next, we're going to bring in some Null Oil and start to shade all of Dooku's hair. The Grey Prime is essentially going to be our base coat for this layer, which is a nice, easy, time-saving cheat. Uh, and then we're going to shade that and then give it a little dry brush. We want to make sure that the shade on our skin is completely dry. Otherwise, those shades will blend and we'll have Null Oil seeping over our skin tone, which is absolutely not what we want. So grab a smallish brush and apply that Null Oil all over Dooku's hair. And I'm also going to grab my fine detail brush to apply that Null Oil to his moustache and his sideburns. Once all of those shades are dry, it's time to do our final layer on Dooku's skin, which is a nice, simple highlight. I'm going to create that by blending 50-50 Kislev Flesh and Bone White from Vallejo, which is just essentially a bone colour, similar to Yushabti Bone in the Games Workshop range. Now we're going to blend those nice and evenly on the wet palette and then really thin that palette out and bring it onto our fine detail brush and we're just going to apply this very very carefully to all of the raised areas of the model. We want to hit the brow line, the ridge of the nose, the cheeks, we're just going to be creating small lines that work inwards to the face accenting all of those ridges. The cheekbones, uh, the, a little bit around the lips and the jawline but obviously the beard is covering a lot of that and then the big one is our forehead, those brow lines that run down into the eyebrows. We want to have a look at where your shade is sitting because that's going to sort of highlight those recesses and then anywhere there's a ridge between those lines of shade on the brow, we want to create a nice little accent of brighter skin tone and that's going to really bring his face to life and really kind of show all those different lines and creases and, and, and bits of kind of age because he's got quite a textural face, Dooku, because of course he is such an elderly gentleman uh, and we want to we want to really accent all of those beautiful elements. Make sure you don't forget to do his ears as well and uh, in between the lips and, and just above his beard line as well. So just two very small but very important details left, of course, his eyes. So I'm going to grab myself some white scar from Citadel Colour and my very finest detail brush and just come in and put a couple of dots in each of his eye sockets. What I like to do is dot my brush on my thumbnail first just to help control the amount of flow that's coming out of my brush so I know what size dot I'm going to be putting. And we're going to do that exact same technique using some Abaddon Black to create his pupils. Load up the fine detail brush with some black paint and then just dot on your nail until you're happy with the size of the dot that you're getting or even if it's slightly bigger and then come in and just dot a little pupil in each eye. Now if you make a white that's too large or your pupil is too big you can always just paint the white back over the pupil and start again and clean up around the white by putting a little bit of your Kislev flesh blend down. Now that is his eyes finished. The last layer is to just put down a little bit of a highlight on his hair and to do that I'm going to come in with some Praxetti white, the dry paint 
paint from Games Workshop, and we're just going to lightly dry brush that all over his hair. I'm actually going to use my fine detail brush again, which seems weird for dry brushing. This brush does everything. Shades, brushes, highlights, it's the best. And I'm going to hit all of those tiny regions, his brow line, his beard, his moustache, his sideburns, and then I'll use a bigger brush for the back of his head. And that way we get the level of control that we're after to apply that nice little kick to his white, aging, regal Sith Lord hair. And there we have Count Dooku's hair and face completely finished. So let's slot Dooku's head down into the model and we can see that our paint job is looking absolutely awesome. The next step is to really blend all of these beautiful layers together with a matte varnish. Now there's a lot of different matte varnishes on the market. There's Flat Clear by Tamiya. There's Tester's Dull Coat, which I'm using today. AK Interactive do an amazing matte varnish. There's also the Munitorum varnish from Games Workshop. They're all fairly good as long as you shake them really well and make sure they're nice and well mixed and apply them in the right condition. Conditions. A nice dry, non-humid day, about 25 degrees Celsius. So do a nice even coat of varnish all over the model, long slow passes until you've got a nice coating and you can see that the varnish makes a huge difference. Not only does it get rid of the gloss, but it also blends the layers together and it's particularly the fabric. It, that cloak just looks really fantastic once it's all blended by the varnish. So with the paint job almost finished, it's time to start working on our basing. I'm going to grab the charred brown from Vallejo and apply that all over the base. It might take a couple of coats because we're going over the bright white of the prime. And then it is time to use our basing materials. Now, of course, I'm setting up my Dooku for our Geonosis campaign. So I'm going to be going back to the tried and true Mars Earth from the Geek Gaming Scenic range. If you want to buy this, you can grab it from my online store at ZorbaZorp.com, which is an awesome way to support the channel. It really helps us be able to make these tutorials for you guys. I'll be gluing the Mars Earth to Dooku's base using the fast drying basing glue from Geek Gaming Scenics. Again, available at my online store. It's an awesome, really sticky glue. And once it's down, it stays sticky forever. Really great at holding all of the fine detail of that sand and beautifully pigmented grout in there. We'll dip Dooku straight in the basing material, shake it all off, and I'll leave that to dry for about half an hour, really, just so it's fully bonded. And then we'll come in, brush off and tap off all of the excess, and then we'll have a really nice coating uh, of that Geonosian sand Mars Earth. Now I like to kind of lift this tone a little bit out of the red of Mars into the more orangey brown of Geonosis. So up next I'm going to grab some Plague Brown from Vallejo and dry brush that all over the Mars Earth just to give it a little bit more of an orange toning and I want that everywhere on the base, all over the little rocks, the various different sediments and all around the base as well and then we'll come in with one more dry brush. We're going to use Kaki from Vallejo game color uh, and we're going to dry brush that everywhere on the base that would be hit by the sun. So anywhere that's under the cloak we'll leave without this dry brush but just on all of those exposed areas because we're once again trying to create the semblance of light on this model. The sun is beaming down on Dooku uh, as he stands on the Geonosian sandy plains and this dry brush really kind of hints at where the sunlight would be. Now Dooku is oh so close, I'm almost ready to call him completely finished. One side effect of the matte varnish you'll notice is that really flattens and knocks back our lightsaber blade. So what I'm going to do is come back in with just a little bit more of our bloody red glaze and do one or two more passes on that saber blade just to brighten it up a little bit. And this is a, a kind of nice effect too because now you have uh, an unvarnished paint on the saber blade and the rest of the model varnished which helps kind of make it pop a little bit and make it look not like a painted part of the model just creates a separation and of course brightens it up as well and, and, and gets rid of that kind of flat varnish look on Dooku's saber. And there we have our finished Count Dooku, and I am absolutely stoked with this model. I'm really happy with how he turned out and how I executed my painting techniques. I think he's painted reasonably well. I hope you guys agree. But the thing that really makes him for me is the color palette and the choice of colors, the way that we've framed the model, using the brighter lining to create that contrast, bringing in a little bit of brown to his shorts, those pops of silver, the brightness of the blade. I'm just really happy with how he turned out, and now he is ready to take to the plane 
remains of Geonosis in our upcoming narrative campaign. So there we have it guys, Count Dooku is ready to take the fight to the Republic on Geonosis and I'm really happy with how this model turned out. Uh, I, I really like the colour combination, the palette, it's a bit of a boring model really, just a black uniform and some red cloaks so I think we've uh, kind of developed an interesting approach that's created a lot of contrast and, and made for a pretty dynamic and striking model on the tabletop which is what you want from your big old Sith Lord, your leader of the Separatist forces so I think he's going to look pretty fantastic right here on our Geonosis board. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think, did you like the approach to the scheme, uh, were the wet blending techniques helpful, if you've got any questions fire them down below. This is a bit of a reset, a phase two if you will of the Zorbazorp Legion content, we've got a whole lot rolling out, a bunch more painting tutorials for all of the new Clone Wars Legion units and perhaps a few from the original trilogy as well, I'm looking at you Shaw Troopers. And we've also got some awesome stuff coming out, we just put out this uh, sort of Geonosis terrain build guide, there'll be a bit more in that vein and this is all building towards our pretty awesome narrative campaign which we are in the process of shooting at the moment and it's looking pretty exciting. So I, uh, I can't wait to show you guys that, it shouldn't be too much longer. If you love what we're doing here and want to support the channel, head on over to our Patreon and thanks so much to all of our patrons already. You guys are the reason that we can do all of this madness and I am so excited to bring you guys some more Star Wars Legion content. So we'll see you in the next video right here on Zorba Zorp Gaming. Cheers guys.